kind of feels like a throwback to the good old Nokia days. The pixel density seems a bit low on this one. The NFC capabilities of this thing are actually amazing. With the app you can clone every NFC card, every NFC device and then replicate it with the phone. It's crazy. By the way, if you want to see all my videos about the Atom XL, then just type in Chris Viral Atom XL in the YouTube search and you will find all the videos. Initiating. Welcome back. Welcome back to my daily grind. Create yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night. No time to lose. One day, one step in the right direction. I'm Chris and I'm only here to show you if I can do it, you can do it too. Welcome back to the vlog. It is Wednesday in our day A in our chance to push out a new topic for this vlog. Actually, the topics for this vlog are specs overview features and my first impressions of the Atom XL. So let's get right to it. By the way, all the product reviews right here. Watch them all. But before we get started, love goes out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my love special and worth living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. Let's get this started with my first impressions. All right, this is it. And my first impression is for sure that it feels super solid. I tried pressing these buttons, but all of them seem to be capacitive. You can't even press the home button. You cannot press this button. On the other hand, this one right here, this programmable button feels amazing. And these two on and volume rocker premium buttons right here, they feel awesome. Colored aluminum and these are aluminum as well. Also the textured rubber right here gives it a really good grip. Down here, as you can see, this phone does not require flaps for the USB charging port or for the audio jack right here, which is a good thing in my opinion. I think these covers are fiddly and annoying and after some time, they will break on you and the Atom XL achieves the same dust and water resistance ratings without these annoying flaps, which is awesome. This thing fits my hand so easily. Kind of feels like a throwback to the good old Nokia days. Well, not quite. Actually, this is Nokia size, but as you can see, it's not much bigger. But let me just put it this way. The Atom XL makes our phones look quite huge. Check this out. My uh, good old Sony Vivas right here. Oh yeah, back here is a little hook. You can hook it to you. I don't know where. Just notice that. Compared to the OnePlus One right here, that's the Note 4. And the Pocophone F1, my daily driver. Now, the pixel density seems a bit low on this one. The screen to body ratio is of course a given with a rugged design, but the resolution per inch is a bit low on this one. Actually, let's get right to it. So great device. The build is awesome. Let's get to the specs and also the features, of course. There was a lot of detective work involved in this. I got some of it from the unihertz.com page, but this is very incomplete. Anyways, the release date is June 2020 on a global level. The price is $329 or around 295 euros. Measurements right here, a weight. When I weighed mine, it was a bit less. It was like 235 or something like that. The build is a hybrid frame. It's aluminum and plastic. Back is hybrid as well and it's a rugged build. The operating system is Android 10 or Android Q straight out of the box. Chipset is the MediaTek Helio P60, 12 nanometers. The CPU is a MediaTek ARM Cortex A53, 4 times 2 gigahertz and an ARM Cortex A73 with also 4 times 2 gigahertz. GPU is ARM Mali G72 MP3 and the RAM is 6 gigabytes. No clue about the frequency. The internal memory is 128 gigabytes of UFS 2.0, likely 2.0. Sensors, there are many sensors. We have the fingerprint, it's front mounted. We have an accelerometer, a gyroscope, an orientation sensor, of course. We have proximity compass, ambient light, a barometer, and a magnetometer as well. The battery is non-removable. It's a rechargeable 4,300 milliamp hour LiPo battery. Pretty sure that it is a LiPo. For the ratings, we have IP68, water and dust resistant, and we have the military standard 810G. The unique selling points are the small size, the rugged build, DMR walkie-talkie, of course, NFC. The NFC capabilities of this thing are actually amazing. With the app, you can clone every NFC card, every NFC device, and then replicate it with the phone. It's crazy. I've never seen something like that. I love it. It's water resistant, dust proof, shockproof. It has many sensors and a big battery. We have 2G, 3G and of course 4G. We have Wi-Fi 5, also dual band 2.4 and 4 gigahertz. We have Wi-Fi direct and we have hotspot. Bluetooth version is 4.2 and we have NFC a yes. As I said, big yes right there. We have an infrared blaster on top and the positioning is GPS, assisted GPS, GLONASS and Baidu. So GPS America, GLONASS is Russia and Baidu is China. And we also have FM radio capabilities. Audio, we have 
have a speaker. Yes, it's a mono speaker on the back side and we have a microphone. Don't ask me how many. I think at least two. I don't know how to pull this information out of the phone yet. If you know how, please let me know in the comments below. The display is four inches in diameter, around 51.5 screen to body ratio. The resolution is just 640 times 1136 pixels. It's a 40 to 71 ratio. Weird ratio, but that's what it is. And yeah, we have 323 ppi in the x axis and 328 in the y axis and the refresh rate is 60 hertz this is an ips panel pretty sure about that and the rating is corning gorilla glass but it's an unspecified version for the main camera we have a single camera with a 48 megapixel sensor don't know about the aperture the focal length is 4.74 millimeters that's what i pulled out of the phone best photo resolution is 48 megapixels and best video resolution is 1080p at 30 frames per second we have autofocus macro and infinity for the focus modes and features are electronic image stabilization and a dual led flash for the front camera we have an 8 megapixel sensor 3.09 millimeters focal length best photo setting 8 megapixels and best video setting 720p at 30 frames per second and it says here that the focus mode is fixed that's true but it's not infinity what i've seen from the selfie pics it's actually rather close the focus point is not far away from the camera well well, it's selfie optimized so makes sense lastly for the ports slots buttons and indicators we have usb 2.0 type c for charging also for fast charging and also for usb otg on the go we have an audio jack 3.5 millimeters and we have a capacitive home button with the fingerprint sensor underneath and we also have two capacitive touch buttons one for back and one for menu you can switch them around we have physical buttons the power button the volume rocker and the dmr push to talk button and this one is customizable this phone also features a hybrid dual sim tray dual standby and the size is nano sim if you want to expand your memory with a micro sdhc card then you will need one of those sim slots and lastly we have an led notification light which is multicolored. so this concludes this topic as i said in the main review on the tech magnet channel it was just so hard to get infos about this device there is hardly anything out there i had to take measurements of the display i came up with the screen to body ratio myself i did the pixel density calculations all of that good stuff so i hope you enjoyed that in my next vlog you can check it out right here i will get to a few demos i will do speaker tests and also camera tests i will take a few videos in different conditions so i guess i will see you there because that's it for this one smash the like button the way math smashed me while doing the calculations bang the bell like pa, to never miss product reviews and check the recent news on chrisviral.com and yeah, that's it for today i will see you tomorrow